everybody, welcome to this week's analysis video. This is another UKI course. This is a uh, Master's Agility or Senior Championship Agility. And this was another really fun one. It's got interesting lines um, and some nice challenges in here. So you really have to know where lead changes are happening and know where you can get to in relationship to your dog's speed and commitment um, and all of those things. So let's go ahead and dive into it. So we are starting down here at number one. And right off the bat, you already have this S line that you have to handle here, going from there, and then your dog is going to need to turn, and you have a bit of a discrimination in this area, depending on your dog's skills. Um, but for this S line, you can lead out a little bit and front cross, so handler position can be um, in either halfway between, or even if you want to lead out a little bit further and be here, and just see your dog. Um, See the commitment, turn the front cross, and when they land, be already be moving in this direction and seeing your dog, and you should get a nice turn there. You also could um, parallel and blind. Those are all fine options there. I liked the front cross. I thought that gave the dog nice information and let me get ahead um, so that I could handle the line from three to four. So going there, you can see that when your dog lands this, there are some other options aside from the correct option. So that tunnel entrance is a little bit, is not as obvious to the dog as say this jump is, or even the dog walk. So a rhythm change here so that your dog knows that they should be um, a, make, that they should be landing going more straight. So if you do nothing, you just run straight and they jump quite, if you have a large jumping dog, then that's why they'll look more at that off course 19 a little bit. Um, so I did a rhythm change to help my dog uh, adjust their takeoff point just a little bit and a name call. And then I made sure that I kept connection and kept moving parallel to the dog's line instead of like a big step to commit. And I was saying tunnel. So if you practice the way I do, I say tunnel every time I want my dog to take a tunnel entry. And so that, and I'm consistent about that so that when I don't want that, so they don't hear a verbal tunnel cue, that's part of what helps with these sorts of things. So that's something for you to think about with your own training. But plenty of connection there, saying tunnel and looking, to, they're looking at their eyes to see that they are looking to go there. And as soon as your dog is committed to the tunnel, you then need to show them what's happening next. And they need to come out of this tunnel and know that they're going here, not there. And the way it looks on the map, it doesn't look like it's as much of a discrimination. It all depends on how your course builder builds this. Um, when we set it up, this line was a lot more obvious to the dog than it appears to be on the map. And that's not the line that we want. We want the dog to adjust their stride when they come out and come this way. So it means that as they're going in the tunnel, that's when you need to give them that tunnel break. And for me, that's a front cross because I want to see my dog, um, or at least it helped for me to see my dog over my right shoulder and then blind to really get this line going here. So a little bit kind of a, a flip-like thing um, happening there to really help them change their line and know that they're going here. That may be too much for some dogs. Maybe a tunnel break is enough for your dog, but you definitely want to make sure that you have stopped by the time your dog is three feet your, by the time your dog is three feet from the tunnel entry, no matter where you are. That's when you need to make that stop and name call um, if that's how you're doing your tunnel break and if you handle it more like a flip. So if you have a very big strided dog and you front cross and then see them come out, see them one time out of the tunnel and blind, that for my bigger strided dog set a nice line to this. Um, at least for my dogs who don't turn as well, for my dogs who do turn really well, then maybe it's a little bit too much. Um, you could just reverse spin the tunnel also or just do a tunnel break. But either way, do something to let them know that that's where they're going. And then for number five to the dog walk here, this is still another discrimination. So if they're going to take five too wide, they can go there. It's possible. So you could um, spin here after you commit them to five or just make a strong rhythm change, definitely a name call so that they know where they're going. Um, they turn tight enough to land facing this one. And then you're running parallel for your dog walk there. So give them that information there. And then if your course builder moves this tunnel entry over a little bit, um, they're not as precise as others, but even if they aren't, 
if the dog turns white here, then it's still quite possible that they will go there. So that's one of those instances where what you do with your chest laser makes a big difference. Because as the handler, if you turn with your dog, your chest laser will point at this one, and then it will point at that one. So if you just do a shoulder pull, all of those things come into play. But if you spin, then your chest laser never points at any of those off-course obstacles. And so that makes it easier for your dog to know that it's this one, that it's going to be the dog walk. And hopefully they will also adjust their line for you as well. Um, so you can do that. And that was enough for my dogs to land facing the next correct obstacle. And then I just ran parallel with the dog walk. Now I have a running dog walk. If you have a stop, then your dogs can stop and then you can make a blind cross and one step to commit. So they're, because they're going this way to seven and then they need to come here. So there's different ways that you can handle that. Like I said, if your dog has a stop, then you could just take a blind cross, see them, and then one step to commit for them to go here because this is, if you blind cross, then um, that will really help them make that lead change to go there. Just make sure they're committed and then um, you're moving this way and they will make that parallel line with you going there. If you have a run, well, you could rear it too if you want to. So even if you, whether you have a stop or not, it is also quite possible to rear across that um, as well. So you can just let your dog go ahead of you and then you change lines after, or you cross their line after they're committed to this one. So with that one, you really want to make sure you see the commitment and cross in time. If you cross too late, then you will get this line. So if you have to rear cross it, so if you have a running dog walk, for example, and you're not um, able to get down here as easily, then you may need to rear cross that, in which case you really need to make sure that you see the commitment and that you cross the dog's line um, before they lift for this. So cross it as early as you can with, but the trick there is as early as you can without pushing them off. And so that's where this has got a bit of a challenge for challenge for those people with running dog walks. If you push the line too early, then your dog will turn this way um, beforehand. So rear crosses may be the more challenging of um, the handling techniques for this line uh, six to seven, but it's a good one to work on. So that's something nice to practice there because um, we don't want this turn, um, the wrap here, because this is not as nice of a line for the dog going to eight it, as the slice is. So um, I think here your line option definitely is this one. This is going to be faster. This is also the natural line going to eight. So those are all important things. So that's something to consider there for you. Um, and for those of you who have a running dog walk, if you are able to leave five earlier, and that's again where the spin really helps, that if you make the spin and leave and you're able to get down there, it is possible to pull off a blind cross or maybe even a front cross. Um, for seven. So those are your options there. And then now we can just run a parallel line eight to nine for the weave poles. And it's nice here when your dog is in the weaves, if you can just leave them in the poles and get ahead so that you are able to connect with them out of the weaves and let them see that they're going through the tunnel. So if the handler is here, then when the, when the dog ha is, before the dog has finished the weave poles, then they will easily see that they should come here with enough connection and go into the tunnel. Um, if you're too far over, then jump 11 is possible. And, you know, just paying attention to the exit line of the weave poles, jump 11 is there. So they may look at it, or if you don't have enough connection, maybe they're going to go behind you. So if you're in somewhere in this neighborhood, making sure that you're not blocking the entrance to the tunnel and that you have connection and are um, seeing your dog come to the correct place, then one step to commit to the tunnel and you can go on um, so that you can handle the line to 11. And so for this tunnel exit, your dog can just come blasting out of the tunnel and 11 is right on their path. So there isn't a whole lot you need to do for that, but you need to know your dog for from 11 to 12. So if your dog will tend to not turn as well, um, then you might have to do a little bit more to get them on a good line to the A-frame. If your dog does turn really well, then there's not much you have to do here either. Um, I have all of them. I have dogs who turn really well and will do this on their own and get a nice almost fantasy line there. And then I have dogs who like will go quite wide um, if I do nothing. So you could make a strong rhythm change here if your dog will tend to jump a little bit wider and be close to the jump, look right at your dog and then see the commitment and get out of there. You also can do a yako turn here or even a spin so that you can really show them, make sure they change your line here so that they can get a safe approach to the A-frame. And then here too, um, 
you can choose what you would like to do for this next line. So it's a very similar challenge, the exit to the A-frame, as, um, as the exit of the dog walk, is that the dog needs to go this way um, and make that turn off of that obstacle. And so maybe you make a blind cross going after the A-frame. So you could be going here and then you cross as your dog is coming down the A-frame, you've already crossed and are looking for your dog, so that's fine. You could also front cross there, and that also works. If you need to rear cross, you can. It's just still the same thing I was talking about, dog walk um, to this jump, that you want to make sure that you see the commitment and cross um, in time to make sure that they are going to turn in the direction that you want, but not so early that you push them off. So the, you can have fun with that spot there and work on that. And then as they are running, running here, that is a, just a parallel line situation, 13 to 14. So your dog is going there. And then here, depending on what your position is, your dog may come into you a little bit as you are heading towards seven, especially if you look at the setup, um, the way it's actually built. So there is a small lead change away from you there if, if you are, um, even if you're not actually that if the handler's running a parallel line here, that your dog will naturally come towards you and then you'll need to commit them because you're probably doing this. So you can see that there is a lead change, just a small one away from you there. So make sure you see the commitment there um, so that your dog can go to seven there independently of you. And then you can just keep moving to the teeter and keep the connection. And then you will see hopefully your dog take the teeter and hopefully stop for you if that's what you have them do. Or maybe you just have them slam down and go on. Um, depends on what your criteria are, and then they need to know as they're exiting the teeter, but before they're committed to 17, they need to know that they are going that way. So that's why you need to do something at 15 um, so that you can get ahead here and make sure that you can get that front cross. And now if you have a stop, then you have you can trust your stop, then it's quite easy to get ahead and do your front cross. But um, if you do not, if your dog is just slamming down the teeter, then you definitely need to do something as your dog is coming to 15. So maybe a step or turn your chest laser towards 15 so that your dog can make that lead change away from you. And then you can leave as early as possible to run down here, see your dog, turn your front cross and then be going towards the tunnel. Um, so front cross one step, um, at least one stride before takeoff here and then strong connection on the landing so that you can make sure that they are committed to going to the tunnel. That's a um, 90 degree there. Um, and this is probably what your reality line will be because they're coming with a ton of speed through here and then um, you're asking them to make this kind of sharp turn. So don't worry if they land a little bit behind you, but definitely see them and commit to the tunnel. And then here, um, it does, again, look on the map like the dog's line goes right to 19, but if the handler is, say you've committed them to the tunnel and you run this way, know your dog. You, they may decide to come that way as they come out of the tunnel and come toward you. So make sure you have connection um, and see your dog exit the tunnel. And if you need to push in a little bit, so if you have the dog who needs that, then push in so you can make sure that they're going where you want them to go. So that's this course. It's it's a pretty fun course. Um, there's some nice little subtle challenges like that and knowing how you're going to handle those lead changes off the contacts, um, making sure that subtle lead change at 17. So um, I keep saying the wrong number there. The subtle lead change 14 to 15. Um, if your dog has high obstacle focus, that's easier. If they don't, if they don't, then they're going to come toward you. So know how you're going to handle that. Um, strong connection out of the weave pole so that you can make sure they're going to the correct tunnel entry for that discrimination. And then this section that we talked about here. Now, going back to um, this beginning section, two through six, um, you, this is actually a really nice little either or spot. So if you're looking for something to train, then you can practice um, having your dog go to each of those places so that they, they can see what does that look like when you're handling them to um, each of these intended locations. And so um, I started, um, you can start at three or start at two and have your dog first go to the correct place, to the tunnel, and then you can have them go to the uh, off course jump there so that they can see what that di looks like, um, what that difference is. You can then handle them to the dog walk. Just be quite careful of the uh, line there, so make sure you set the correct line. And then if you really want to, you can even handle them to this backside. And then you would have a really nice little spot for either or um, so that they can really pay attention to your handling and, and watch 
um, and balance out that obstacle focus and handler focus in there. So that's really worth doing. Um, and you also can do the same thing. So if you want to start them on four, then you can have them go to this one. You can then handle them to this side here. And then this is another spot where that either or um, five to six you can do. So five to six, the correct line, the line in the um, map is that, but you could also practice four, five, and go back to the tunnel. You could practice um, and then either or four, five, six, the correct line, and then either or four, five, this off course, either or, um, yeah, I said this off, this one, and then you, you could do to this one. So lots of stuff that you can do in that section with either, either or training to give your dog um, an opportunity again to really pay attention to your handling. Um, so I, I ran the course, the full course once or twice, but I actually spent most of the time working on those little skills and also working on the exits from the contacts. So um, have fun with this course. It's really well designed and has, like I said, those nice subtle challenges in here. So um, good stuff to work on. And if you have any other ideas about how to handle in this course or any questions, post them in the comments. And I will look forward to seeing your videos in the Facebook group.